Before we start, I just want to mention that only 20.5% of you are subbed. If you enjoy the content, please consider liking, subscribing to support the channel. Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Severus Snape, Harry Potter, and the Deathly Hallows. More specifically, we're going to be addressing one large aspect of the Harry Potter story, Harry's trust in Snape. Throughout the series, Harry flip-flops with Snape, the two go back and forth constantly. Snape is Harry's professor, his instructor, his elder, but he's also the man that was turned down by Harry's mother. What this meant for their relationship is that they would never truly get along. Furthermore, Snape saw so much of James Potter, his childhood bully, in Harry. This was an aspect that he found difficult to overcome. However, what's revealed in his final moments is that Snape also saw an aspect of Harry's mother in Harry, her eyes. This is something that he wouldn't admit until he was an inch from death. You see, Snape was a proud man. He always tried to remain stoic and didn't like to admit when he was wrong. But the truth is that Snape was wrong and he knew it. He knew that he shouldn't have ever blamed an innocent young boy for the actions of his parents. But at the same time, Snape is Snape and he did what he had to do to cope with his unfortunate circumstance. So, provided that Snape was a former Death Eater, bullied Harry immensely throughout the course of his life, and murdered Dumbledore in front of him, it's hard to imagine how Harry could have ever trusted him, even on his deathbed. Nevertheless, in the Deathly Hallows, when Snape is falling to pieces after being viciously attacked by Nagini, Harry walks up to a vulnerable shadow of the Snape that he knew. At this stage, Harry collects Snape's tears. A terrible, rasping, gurgling noise issued from Snape's throat. Take it. Take it. Something more than blood was leaking from Snape, silvery blue, neither gas nor liquid. It gushed from his mouth and his ears and his eyes, and Harry knew what it was, but did not know what to do. A flask, conjured from thin air, was thrust into his shaking hand by Hermione. Harry lifted the silvery substance into it with his wand. When the flask was full to the brim, and Snape looked as though there was no blood left in him, his grip on Harry's robes slackened. In this scene, Snape gives Harry his tears so that Harry can bring them to the pensive. The purpose of this is simple, give Harry the full story and help him to understand his tragedy, the prince's tale. Harry approaches the pensive exhausted, withered and war-torn, welcoming an escape from his own reality. The stone pensive lay in the cabinet where it had always been. Harry heaved it onto the desk and poured Snape's memories into the wide basin with its runic markings around the edge. To escape into someone else's head would be a blessed relief. Nothing that even Snape had left him could be worse than his own thoughts. At this point, Harry finally figures out that Snape was actually one of the good guys. Snape's past is put on display, his tragedy, bullying at the hand of Harry's father, a desperate attempt to save the life of Harry's mother, and conversations with Dumbledore revealing his true motivations. Suddenly, everything was so clear. But what I've always wondered about this scene is, why did Harry trust Snape? At this stage, Snape hadn't proved himself as one of the good guys. Sure, Voldemort had attacked Snape, but Voldemort was a ruthless dark wizard who was known to have turned on his own out of anger. Couldn't Snape's tears have been one final distraction? One last service for a devout follower of the Dark Lord? To me, there are two things that immediately come to mind for how Snape could have played Harry. The first possibility is of course that Snape was dying but remained loyal to Voldemort regardless. In this scenario, Snape very well could have tampered with his memories and sent Harry to his death. The next possibility is that Snape wasn't actually dying at all and that it was all a big ruse. As Malfoy was the one to disarm Dumbledore, it's not entirely unreasonable to deduce that Malfoy would have told Snape about this, a message that would have been relayed to Voldemort, explaining the possibility of taking ownership through disarming. Playing on Harry's emotions, the whole Snape dying thing could have been an elaborate setup in order to put Harry in a compromised position. Okay, so there are some reasons for why I think that Harry maybe shouldn't have trusted Snape. However, I've also got some points supporting why Harry made the right decision in that moment. First of all, seeing Snape like this was entirely uncharted territory, and though apprehensive, Harry knew deep down that Snape would never, in any circumstance, put himself in this kind of compromised position. He did not know why he was doing it, why he was approaching the dying man. He did not know what he felt as he saw Snape's white face and the fingers trying to staunch the blood wound at his neck. Harry took off the invisibility cloak and looked down upon the man he hated, 
whose widening black eyes found Harry as he tried to speak. Harry bent over him, and Snape seized the front of his robes and pulled him close. Harry wasn't going in blind, he knew the deception that Snape was capable of, but here Harry was, witnessing a man that prided himself on his stoicism, completely falling to pieces, more helpless than ever. At this stage, it occurs to Harry that perhaps Snape is not quite as bad as he always thought. Harry didn't know why, but he somehow knew that he needed to approach Snape in these final moments, and he was certainly right about that. Snape died looking into the eyes of a boy that was more significant to him than Harry ever knew. This was the boy that shared the same face of the man that bullied him for his entire childhood, and the eyes of the only woman that he ever loved, the same woman that spared her own life to save this boy. With his final breaths in the film version, Snape looked straight into Harry's face and uttered the iconic line, You have your mother's eyes. These were the same eyes that caused Snape more pain than anything else in his entire life, but at the same time, they were the eyes that enabled Snape to feel love, to feel alive. In the book, he simply says to Harry, Look at me. I think that Snape's fragility, paired with the fact that Dumbledore had always maintained that Snape was on their side, was enough for Harry to give him a chance. Throughout the final books, Dumbledore constantly reaffirmed that Snape was on their side, even when repeatedly questioned on this fact by those around him. Everyone else was unconvinced. Furthermore, Dumbledore never explained why he trusted Snape, only that he did so unconditionally. Even on the day that Snape kills Dumbledore, Harry raises the topic of Snape's loyalty with him. But he's a very good Occlumens, isn't he, sir? said Harry, whose voice was shaking with the effort of keeping it steady. And isn't Voldemort convinced that Snape's on his side, even now? Professor, how can you be so sure Snape's on our side? Dumbledore did not speak for a moment. He looked as though he was trying to make up his mind about something. At last he said, I am sure. I trust Severus Snape completely. And that's it for this video. I hope that answers the question of why Harry trusted Snape. Did you guys ever think about this? If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, the mind is not a book to be opened at will and examined at leisure.